There's no time to lose. A patient arrives in the emergency room struggling to breathe. It seems her heart is failing, a life on the line. True life drama, but it's only a training session in one of the largest skills and simulation centers in North America. Medical students and healthcare professionals come here to practice care procedures. The room is designed to replicate real life experiences. The same equipment, the same instruments and high-tech mannequins that react just like real patients. The computer can control the mannequin to go into different heart rhythms. It can control the oxygen levels, the blood pressure. The mannequin can bleed, it can sweat, it can cry. Yeah. Has anyone ever told you you have heart failure or COPD? More than a third of so-called adverse events in Canadian hospitals are down to medical error, with traditional training methods seen as a major factor. The old teaching was see one, do one, teach one, which means that watch it first and then practice once on a patient and then in theory you're supposed to be so good that you can then teach someone else to do it. And, and I think nowadays, especially with this whole concept of simulation and patient care and reducing patient error, the, the new teaching algorithm is practice many, do one. The simulated operation is videoed to allow for an in-depth debrief. You really maximize the learning from that experience uh, by the, the reflecting on it and then the discussing. It's not just about the emergency room. Students also practice surgical skills for a range of procedures, such as intravenous insertions and suturing. Here, the young medics learn about an operation known as phlebotomy. I, I really do think that learning these procedures on models increases our confidence drastically. If coming here and I've learned how to do put in an IV, and if I hadn't done that before, and if it was my first one on a patient, I'd be much more nervous. And the more confident the surgeon, the smaller the risk of mistakes.